The NASCAR Cup Series playoffs started in Atlanta on Sunday. Did Walmart ruin a good race? Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. The Atlanta fall race was never going to live up to the Atlanta spring race, especially not in terms of the finish, but was the race that we saw on Sunday to kick off the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs a good race? We'll recap it in just a second, but hey, before we get into it, I'm trying something different with the Break Hard show this week. I'm going to do a voicemail segment. If you want to call in, let me know what your thoughts are about the race, if you have a question you want to have answered, or if you just want to say hi, I guess. You can give me a call at 513-445-9809. It'll go straight to a voicemail you leave your voicemail after the beep and then maybe i'll include it in the episode this week trying to change things up a little bit but getting back to the actual race that happened on sunday for the cup series in atlanta off the top before we recap it i'm going to give it an eight i think off the top of my head that's about where it was i'm not the biggest fan of the atlanta super speedway reconfiguration i don't necessarily think the racing is that great sure we got an all-time finish in the spring but does that make for a good race a good finish doesn't make up for a mediocre race and i think on sunday in Atlanta, we saw a pretty mediocre race, all things considered. I was happy that we didn't have a ton of gigantic wrecks that junked up a lot of people, but there were certainly playoff altering things that happened. So let's get into it. Stage number one started off with pole sitter, Michael McDowell. He had blaster on the car and he was blasting the field. In the first portion of this race, McDowell looked really, really strong. And that's what Front Row Motorsports does. They build these cars, the 34 and the 38, to be very fast out front. The problem is, if he gets back into traffic, well, this car's too trimmed out to run back in traffic uh, very well, and we saw that happen to McDowell on Sunday. On lap 30, McDowell finally got passed by Ryan Blaney, and the Penske cars definitely showed that they came to play on Sunday. They were a major factor all day, including with the winner, which we'll get to in a moment. Alex Bowman, also in that first stage, very much showed that he came to play on Sunday. All those talks about uh, and rumors about him potentially being out of his ride at the end of the year, replaced, getting demoted down to Spire, Motorsports have certainly fired up the driver of the 48 car because Bowman, the showman, was putting on a show in that first stage, passing people, going to the outside, to the inside. did not matter. Alex Bowman was going where he wanted to go. His average running position all day was fifth, and that's exactly where he finished at on Sunday. But the 48 was a force. He was definitely the strongest of the Hendrick cars all day. And then in the closing laps of stage one, we had our first playoff altering incident of the day. Kyle Larson gets loose in turn two, goes to correct it. And as he turns back right to try to catch the car, absolutely rockets himself into the outside wall like he's Michael McDowell back at Texas when he had that horrific flip when he was at MWR. Thankfully, Larson didn't go over, but it was a brutal hit for him. And as he's spinning across the racetrack in the middle of the track on the exit of turn two, Chase Briscoe thought that he was still in the Arca series and absolutely clobbered the five car of Kyle Larson. Briscoe was out of the race as well. Those two done for the day. Briscoe said he hit the five car so hard it broke the brake pedal inside the car which is pretty brutal. He said his feet are okay, his ankles are fine, didn't break anything. But the 14 car now is, what, minus 20 to the cutoff line as we head into Watkins Glen next weekend and Bristol the weekend after that. For Larson, big time blow. Good thing he had a lot of playoff points coming into the day. And then Dave Burns interviewing Kyle Larson after he got out of the infield care center said, you came into today with the most playoff points. This is affecting it. And Larson just said, obviously, laughed and walked away. Like, come on, Dave, of course. It really felt like Dave was trying to fit another question in there and he really didn't need to at that. That stage ended under caution. Uh, Ryan Blaney wins the stage. Austin Sendrick second and uh, Alex Bowman P3. And then to start off stage number two, Austin Sendrick showed up and man, did he assert his dominance in the first half of stage number two. Led the most laps he's ever led ever in a NASCAR Cup Series race on Sunday. And it looked for a moment like the two car, which was painted up a lot like the 12 car. And every time you saw it, you thought it was Ryan Blaney in the Menards car was maybe en route to his third ever NASCAR Cup Series victory. Was he going to be the spoiler of the day and be a guy that advances to the second round, locks himself in, and everyone's like, didn't see that one coming. Cindric looked super strong, as did all of three of those Penske cars on Sunday. And then we had a debris caution come out right at about the time green flag pit stops were about to start. Felt like a really convenient time. I never actually saw the debris either, um, but it definitely felt conveniently timed, especially with Atlanta having a very odd pit road. And if you remember back to the springtime, we had McDowell and Byron wrecked down there uh, coming onto pit road, and there was not a caution, even though the 24 car was essentially sitting on the racetrack in a very precarious situation. But we did not get green flag stops on 
on Sunday in Atlanta. We had a big moment where Ross Chastain nearly pulled a Kyle Larson, but didn't go full Kyle Larson. You never want to go full Kyle Larson on a day like uh, Sunday where you end up head first into the wall. That is a bad look all around. And then moving on to his teammate, Daniel Suarez. Suarez was blocked down below the white line on the backstretch by Joey Logano. NASCAR race control ruled that it was not a penalty for Suarez because he was forced down there. Now, here's where things get tricky because at the end of the stage, Justin Haley blocks the 45 car of Tyler Reddick down onto the white line. Left side tires go below it. NASCAR penalizes Haley for that move and sends him to the back of the line for the start of stage three. Meanwhile, Logano does the exact same thing and does not get penalized for it. Not sure what the justification for that was, if they explained it. I certainly didn't see it. I would love to hear an explanation for why that happened, though. But at the end of stage two, Austin Sindrick ends up winning the stage. Blaney second and Bowman once again in third. Then for the start of stage three, Austin Sindrick during that pit stop uh, from stage two into stage three right there, his front tire changer loses the uh, wheel nut. He has to go around and it slows down the pit stop for him. So he's back in the pack a little bit from there. We had another incident on the day where John Hunter Nemechek spun down the backstretch. He had Lolly pop on the car, which if you've ever had that, it's going to make you poop. And I don't know if he pooped his pants after that, but if he drank too much of the sponsor, it's going to happen. So Tyler Reddick probably could have used that last week when he, in his words, was locked up uh, for much of the night after the Southern 500. And that's really all I want to talk about bowel movements at this uh, point going forward. Then with 56 laps to go, Chris Buescher does pull a Kyle Larson uh, on on the exit of turn two, gets sideways, catches it, goes back up into the wall, tags the 12 car of Ryan Blaney. And thankfully for Blaney, Martin Truex Jr. was there to catch him like a good friend would, except Truex ends up getting a ton of damage out of that incident. Blaney was able to recover perfectly fine and, and contend for the win at the end of the race. Busher was done for the day. He's not in the playoffs, so it didn't affect him. Truex is in the playoffs. And when asked how the car was after they tried to fix it, and he said, you Fix it about 10%, but we're still 80% effed, which is bad in terms of scaling of things. You never want to be 80% effed. That's, that's not good. Better than 100%, but still not ideal there. Then, with 11 laps to go, Sam Walton decided to go all Buffalo Wild Wings on us and throw an absolute wrench into the entire race and drop a sign. The big Walmart sign falls onto the front stretch right there. NASCAR has to throw a caution because there's a gigantic Walmart sign on the front stretch. And I'll be honest, it ruined the race. The Walmart absolutely ruined the, ruined the race. All the people that were like, boycott Bud Light, boycott whatever you want to boycott this month. Boycott Walmart for ruining, they robbed us of a good finish. We had Ty Gibbs, Joey Logano, Kyle Busch, Rasha St. Daniel Suarez all battling for the lead and what would have been a really interesting finish up to that point. Intensity was picking up and then freaking Walmart has to fall onto the racetrack and ruin it for all of us. So I guess if you sign up for Walmart Plus, maybe that's a perk. You get to ruin races and alter the outcome of it and get to use the checkout lanes without having to stand in those hellacious lines. Then we finally get back to green after stupid Sam Walton ruined a good finish for us. And with two laps to go, it looks like we're about to get the white flag. And then Noah Gragson gets turned by Harrison Burton on the backstretch as Harrison ping-ponged his way around back there and then eventually wrecks the 10 car of Gragson. He goes headfirst into the wall. Uh, slow to get out. I think he was frustrated with that. But hey, Jeff Burton was pretty critical of his son. He was like, Harrison Burton right here just gets up into the, uh, maybe the two car is what he got into, and then goes back down the track, hits the 10 car, and sends him. Unfortunate for Noah, but hey, Harrison survived that incident. That sets up a green-white checker, and you have Joey Logano on the inside with his teammate, Ryan Blaney behind him. Daniel Suarez on the, on the outside with his teammate, Ross Chastain behind him. And it looked like we were going to get a good, probably side-by-side -side finish at the line. Unfortunately, though, for Trackhouse, Ross Chastain just could not stay tucked up behind Daniel Suarez uh, on the restart there and through the corners. And he lost the front end of the car and just couldn't give him a big enough push. And Logano gets a good push from Blaney, gets out to the lead, was able to control it. He ends up winning the race. All of that for a Joey Logano victory. Listen, Logano puts himself in place for, for a victory. Is he the best, most exciting winner? Absolutely not. But did he do the best job of putting himself in position to win? Absolutely. And that's what he seems to do on these uh, drafting track races for the most part. So Logano locks himself into the second round, picks up his second win of the year. Um, obviously, it was coming down to fuel. If there would have been another green-white checker, things maybe would have got a little bit sketchier uh, in terms of fuel mileage. But Logano wins. There's a big wreck coming to the finish. Bubba Wallace gets in the wall, collects Denny Hamlin, Harrison Burton's in it, uh, Cody Ware. 
Uh, pretty heavy hits for a lot of guys. And for Denny Hamlin, an absolutely abysmal day. Obviously, he had to start in the back after he had an issue in qualifying with his motor. Kind of did a thing where they talked about wanting to minimize the points damage. And he ran like in the mid-20s all day, still gets caught up in an incident, and is only sitting two points right now above the cut line. Speaking of points, Kyle Larson right now is sitting plus 15 over the cut line. He's still sitting comfortable, heading to a racetrack in Watkins Glen. He's one at, heading to a racetrack in Bristol. He's one at as well. Austin Sindrick, probably had the biggest day. He is now plus 27 thanks to his stage points and his stage win as well. You also have Brad Keselowski currently on the outside looking in. He is tied with Ty Gibbs currently for that 12th spot. Harrison Burton minus 15. Uh, Martin Trex Jr. minus 18. Chase Briscoe minus 20. Daniel Suarez, great day for him as well, plus 22. Denny Hamlin is certainly going to have to have a good weekend uh, next weekend to keep himself out of the danger zone. I'm sure he really wishes he had those playoff points from that TRD engine mishap uh, that, that happened a few weeks ago. The Cup Series now heads off to Watkins Glen, where Will William Byron won at last year, and he could desperately use another victory after having a pretty dry streak now through the summer at this point. And then after that, of course, they have Bristol to close out the first round. Listen, opening the playoffs with Atlanta certainly delivered some surprises, some shocks. Uh, I'm interested to hear what people have to say, what they thought of the race. I didn't necessarily love the race. I didn't think it was bad. I didn't think it was great. Um, and it certainly didn't have the finish that, you know, made up for an OK race like we had back in the spring. But hey, man, intensity picked up heavy over those last few laps laps there. And uh, overall, I mean, it's a day at the racetrack cars going around who can be upset about that. So let me know in the comments what you thought about today's race, what your rating for it is. And like I said at the beginning, leave me a voicemail at 513-445-9809. And we will have that included um, in the new segment I'm going to do on the break car show, or maybe it'll be its own segment or own uh, video. Who knows at this point, but let me know in the comments. Follow me on TikTok at break hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at break hard blog.